Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about my mobile photography workflow. Lately, I've been shooting a lot of photos on my phone, and so I kind of wanted to make a video consolidating my thoughts around the whole process and uh, maybe benefit you all. So we're gonna go from the capture stage, you know, shooting the photo, to editing it, to eventually sharing it on social media or sending it to your friends or whatever. So obviously, at the beginning of the workflow is the capture stage, and so I kind of wanted to break down at least the hardware side of things first. Uh, so right now, I'm shooting on the iPhone XS. It's a great camera. Um, but you know, if you're shooting on iPhone 10, iPhone 8, some older, an Android phone, whatever, most of these tips should probably apply to the phone that you have. So don't worry about that. But right now I am shooting on the iPhone 10s. And then as far as accessories go, I do have the moment case on it and I attach typically the moment and a morphic, but I've also been enjoying the moment 58 millimeter. And I have a video coming on those lenses very, very soon. But uh, yeah, right now I've got the iPhone 10s with some moment lenses. Lenses. So then as far as software goes for capturing these photos, I'm using an app called Halide. I made a video about using Halide on the iPhone XS. I think it was probably the last video on this channel, so definitely go check that out. A uh, card should pop up here if I don't forget, which let's be honest, I probably did. But anyway, uh, yeah, I've been using Halide. Now, Halide did sponsor that last video, but I've been a fan of the Halide app for a very, very long time, way before they ever sponsored me. So I highly recommend it. And uh, it's just a really good app. I really love it for its design and functionality. Uh, it just feels like, the design feels like a very tactile experience. It feels like you're using an actual, like physical DSLR, but it's on a screen. So I just love, the design and so much of it. And I use it literally all the time. Like I'm opening the app five times a day, probably shooting photos all day long. So um, highly recommend that app. So if you're on Android, unfortunately, Halide is not available for your phone, but there are plenty of other manual camera apps on Android that you can definitely use to you know capture these images. Right now, we're not really focusing on the capturing stage so much as the overall workflow, the editing, the exporting, all that. So that's not really a focus right now, but just use camera app of your choice, but if you're on the iPhone, I highly recommend checking out Highlight. All right, so after we've captured these images, let's move on to the more processing side of things for this workflow. So as far as my editing process goes, it's kind of a two-step process. So first I'll open up the raw file inside of Lightroom and do my basic adjustments, bringing up shadows, lowering highlights, adjusting contrast, things like that. But I don't do too many edits here. I'll export the image and then I'll open it up in Visco and apply some sort of filter. I really enjoy the way the Visco filters work. And uh, however, when you open a raw image in Visco, I don't really like the way they lift shadows and things like that. So I try to just adjust and bring things to kind of a neutral level and then apply the filters. So it's a, kind of this two-step process. However, I do have Lightroom presets I use for my own photos. So sometimes if the photo would fit one of those presets, then I'll go ahead and do all the editing inside of Lightroom. But most of the time for, you know, the various photos that I just throw up on Twitter or in my Instagram story that aren't going into my like feed, which I try to keep very like high quality, uh, most of those photos are going through this two-step process of Lightroom to Visco and then to the final cropping and sharing stage. Now, if I happen to have shot the photo as an anamorphic photo with Moments Anamorphic Lens, then after editing, I'll throw it through an app called D-Squeeze to kind of de-squeeze it. And the process kind of varies when I am editing an anamorphic photo. And so I'll probably be doing an anamorphic photography video some point down the road. But for now, that's kind of the basic process. All right, so now let's move on to the exporting and sharing portion of the workflow. When I'm on desktop, I typically try to export to optimize for Instagram with the right resolution and JPEG quality and all of that. But when you're on mobile, it's kind of hard to set those settings. So I just export at the highest quality. However, I try to crop things properly for the various platforms that I'm sharing on. So if it's on Instagram, if it is a photo that I did shoot on my phone, then I'm going to try to export it in a four or five crop. Most of the time, I'm sticking to this crop. However, there are there has been one instance in the past month or so that I have wanted to you know upload a 16:9 crop because it was just a photo I was super amped on, but it was really only designed for that 16:9. So most of the time, four or five, but sometimes I you know drop down to a 16:9 crop. Now, if I'm sharing on Instagram stories, I typically crop as a 16:9 crop just so that it fills the entire thing. On Twitter. I typically go for a four or five crop, although sometimes I'll just go for a square crop, but um, definitely cropping for the platform that you're sharing to is very, very nice. 
But yeah, that's pretty much my workflow from capturing the photos to editing them to finally sharing them and posting them on various social medias. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found some useful workflow tips that you can apply to your own workflow. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I do when I shoot on my phone. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you enjoy cinematic filmmaking and photography videos, hit that subscribe button. Thanks, and I'll see y'all later.